the page, Tim Kalashaw, Kevin Blackstone, Jackie McMullen. Hello, Jackie. Ooh. Today, two plates, 13 screws, one return, one bat, one arm, one floating body in the arm. Eesh. Maybe what? last week was just a dream. What? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> wow. It's even better. It's back with us all. The reverse of the fortune. It's Around the Horn, <laughs> the show of competitive better. Here's Tony Rielli. Check this out. People who work with numbers for a living say there's a 89% chance the Packers make the playoffs if they win out. However, it's a 6% chance they win out. Figure that out. Everyone agrees it's more likely with Aaron Rodgers, who doctors say is not completely healed, but two plates, 13 screws, two months rest. Good enough to clear him. Tim, start us off. Do the rewards outweigh the risks for the Packers here? Barely, Tony. Barely outweigh the, the, uh, the risks. And uh, as you said, doctors are saying there's an 80%, his collarbone is 80% healed, so he can go play. You've got to wonder what happens in that first sack when he gets driven to the ground, okay. if, if that happens. Here, here's the other problem. They're seven and six, they need three wins. They have the same problem as the two other seven and six teams, the Lions yeah. and the Cowboys. All three have lost to Atlanta, which is eight and five. And if Atlanta doesn't lose two more games, none of those teams has a realistic chance of making the playoffs, even if they win out. Green Bay's got the toughest schedule of those three. They got Carolina, they got the Vikings, they're at Detroit, but it's Aaron Rodgers. We've seen him run the table before. So you give it a shot. So you think 80% healed, you give it a shot to make a run to try to make the playoffs. KB, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, we've seen this before. Last time uh, when he broke that clavicle, he came back at the end of the season, uh, threw for 318 yards, two touchdowns, a couple picks, uh, got a W, and got into the playoffs. The reward is all there. You know, if, if Aaron Rodgers was in his middle 20s or early 20s, and he was the future of this franchise, and I would say, well, maybe, you know, you don't want to hop on this train right now. But he's not. And he wants to win, and he's put in all this extra effort with this new, uh, with this extra surgery, um, so that he could get back, allow the guy to get back and try and win for his team with two really tough te games coming up in their last three. Last two quarterbacks to win the Super Bowl were what, 39, 38, I think, right? Yeah, so a few more years. That would suggest he still has 10 years left or so. Jackie McMullen <laughs> on, on Rodgers coming back at 80%. I, I understand the logic of it. I know that the Packers are a conservative group, and so they must feel fairly comfortable. But you know what KB just said a second ago? The last time he broke his clavicle. Remember? The yeah. last time he broke his clavicle. Okay? These things happen. And at 80% healed, there is a chance it could happen again. I understand why the Packers are doing it. And ultimately, I do think it, to some degree, it is Aaron Rodgers' decision. And I understand completely okay. why he plays, because that's what, that's what NFL players do. But you can't tell me that the, the team physicians aren't sweating this one out a little bit. This is the classic case of if he makes it through the year, what a great decision. If he goes down and get hurt again, we're all going to say, are you kidding me? Why did you do this? Woody Page. I think we're all agreed, Tony, that uh, it's worth the risk to try and bring okay. him back. But I would do it in another way. If he can't beat the Panthers, I'd get him back out of there. If he struggles some against the Panthers, when he did come back, Kevin, and I, and I want to follow up, Tony, on that, he is the future of the Packers. There is no else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when he came back before, he played a lot more conservative, even though he threw those three touchdown passes. So I think he's got an advantage this time, Tony. He, they've developed a run game while he's been out and so it don't ha it, they don't have to rely on him to get outside the pocket and be so uh, aggressive in his play if he just plays within himself he was having one of his best years ever before he got hurt i think he can come back and play at a high level but if they don't beat the panthers i get him back out that, there that's a fair point do any of you think what we saw happen to Carson Wentz, specifically what happened to the Eagles. They're minus their starting quarterback now. Minnesota, they lost the game this week. It's the appearance that this NFC may be a little bit more wide open than it was two weeks ago. Go ahead, Kalashaw, you can address that. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. This is different. Sometimes you sneak in as the sixth seed and you really don't have a chance because there's these monster teams up at the top that have been great all year. It's Nick Foles and it's Case Keenum. And I, and I know Keenum's played very well, but this is still very different from your established Maybe. Hall of Fame quarterback leading those Absolutely. Players. We said it last week. You know, was it going to be clearer or murkier coming out of that weekend? I went with murkier. It's still murky. McMullen. 
Pretty murky. Here's the thing, though. You can't change the losses they already have. And, and another thing, Woody, what exactly does play within yourself mean? Can someone explain that to me? I don't know what that <laughs> means. Because all I know is if Aaron Rodgers needs to get a first down, he's going to run to get the first down. Yeah, it's true. But if he breaks his clavicle again, he's going to be playing outside of outside himself. himself. His, his body exactly. will be pouring outside <laughs> of himself. Beside himself. All right, we're going to move on. Let's talk Thunders Pacers tonight. Paul George back in Indy. What percentage booze in the arena tonight, Woody? 59%. To Kalashaw? Uh, 70, to match them being the seventh seed last year. 79%, the uh, secret check. 80%, price is right answer. The other question is, what percentage do we have in Oladipo takeover? Because he's been transcended the last couple of weeks. He's at, outstanding George from last season. Jackie, I'll start with you. How do you view tonight's game? especially in regards to the trade. And are you really willing to call the trade over at this point? Pacers win the trade. Well, it's a little too early to do that, but the early returns absolutely favor the Pacers. And those numbers are striking to me because I thought Paul George had a pretty great year last year, and, and Oladipo is better yeah. in every single category. But here's the real downer if you're a Paul George fan. The one thing we thought he would do when he went to Oklahoma City was when Russell Westbrook sat down, He'd give the Thunder a break. They wouldn't have all those negative uh, margins that they had all last season. Do you know what they are when Westbrook is off the floor and Paul George is on the floor? It's a negative 14.5 net rating. That, to me, is the most stunning number of all. Paul George just isn't getting it done in Oklahoma City. KB? Well, the problem with the, with the Thunder right now is they're horrible on the road, although they did get crushed by Charlotte at home the other night. They're like 3-10 and 10 on the road. Um, pay, the, you know, George has not had a horrible year. He's averaging 20, grabbing 5. Um, he's leading the league, I think, in steals. He's playing defense like he normally does. He's still shooting 40% from the three-point line. But let's just give Oladipo right now most improved player in the league. I mean, I don't think anybody saw this coming when they made this trade. In fact, the trade was criticized because they were not made, necessarily getting enough back uh, but they've gotten everything back and more in Oladipo uh, but you know what let's just wait until the jerk comes back let's say in the second half of the year after the all-star game and see where both these teams are I want to get back to Jackie McMullen and the face she made when Kevin said that George was having a good year Kalashaw first though well I, I I think it's a huge game for the Thunder in that they're gonna have to come out of this under 500 tailspin at some point they should anyway and if they can't do it the night George is as supremely motivated as he's ever going to be, and the team should be around him, then I don't know when it's going to happen. The problem is, in a lot of ways, this game is as big for Oladipo to show the Thunder, mm -hmm. this is what you had last year, but I never got the ball because of Westbrook. Uh, then, you know, he may go off and have a much bigger game than George. He's been a much better player. I think they've already won the trade just because when it happened last, thunder, last summer, all the NBA experts said, oh, Indiana gave him away. They didn't get it. They didn't get anything for Paul George. Okay. But look how it's playing so out. So you're now. calling tonight the Oladipo game, not the Paul George Could game. Could be. Could mm -hmm. turn out to be. Woody Page, how about you? Uh, two things about Oladipo. He's going to win the Home Depot Most Improved Player Award this year, and he's also going to be an all-star, and Paul George is not going to be that. The reason why I said 59% of the, the local newspaper there, the Star, did a survey of people in Indianapolis. They Inside said information. Of them said they would boo him tonight. So I go along with what they believe, not what you three guys say. So in regard to George and coming back, yes, he's he's very motivated, but he should get booed because he is the one who announced it a year and a half ago. I'm not going to sign an extension here. He did get them to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, this game is a lot more important, to, I think, to Indianapolis because the Pacers want to prove that they got a much better deal. And Sabonis, I told you, was going to be a great NBA player like his father. You didn't believe me. When did you tell us that? No, no, what you said was he was going to be better than his father, who's in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's what you said. That. Right. Did you? He did. He said it up. He wants us to check the tape because he thinks he's right now because Sabonis is averaging 12 and 7, Arvita's which is wonderful. Arvidas but Arvidas Sabonis, while well, he averaged 12 and 7 for his career in the NBA, is, is in oh, the well, Hall come of on. Fame. He may have been the greatest big man of all time. We just never yeah. got to see the yeah. best of him because he played overseas. That's not even close. That's what, why Jackie's in kidding. the Hall of Fame, Woody Page. You see? Yeah. Jackie, yeah. you made that face when, when oh, Kevin well, brought up. Well, because I, I understand. Here, right? I, I don't think numbers do it at right now, KB, if you're Paul George. Because you know what? If the playoffs start today, Oklahoma City's out and the Indiana Pacers are in. And one doesn't have Paul George anymore. And one does. A guy they thought they were going to help them be contenders. So I think Paul George would trade those numbers for the wins at his old team. Well, the had. number that you gave us earlier wasn't a good number. It was minus 14.5 in the net rating, which yeah. makes me ask this. 
Only because you said that, Jackie. Do you think yes. the Thunder see that and may consider trading George before the deadline this year because, you know, he can walk at the end of the year, and if they feel he's not going to stick around, maybe get something for him now? I, I think they may consider it because he could be a rental player for a contending team. Uh, that's a possibility, especially if you're not going to be in the playoffs. Yet. Anyone I else think that's a possibility? Could the Wizards yeah, use Sam, him, Kevin? Could the Sam Mavs Preston use him for a playoff James push? Harden a lot sooner than they thought he would trade him, so you could certainly see him yeah. trading George. Yeah, yeah probably, yeah, probably yeah, to Dallas for that playoff push. All right, we'll move on. Maybe. <laughs> Shohei Otani. <laughs> His physical's out, and it means, well, maybe last week was just a dream for Mina Khans. I love this. I'm sorry. I love this. That's backwards. I say again, that's backwards. Floating body, Otani's elbow, ulnar collateral ligament strain. He had platelet therapy. He is an increased risk of Tommy John, they say. Woody, what's the level of concern here? Well, for me, it's not that much. Uh, and I, I don't think the Angels would have gone through this. They did their investigation, their due diligence, and they went ahead with it. He's a young guy. If he has Tommy John surgery, we've seen that most every young pitcher now has to go through that. So maybe you want to go ahead and get it over with. But here's what I would do. I mean, I think it's, you know, people are saying, Babe Ruth pitch, and, and he's going to be an outfielder and a designated hitter. I would concentrate on being very cautious with him as a pitcher for the next couple of years and spend more time using him as a DH, putting him in the outfield. He's still 23 years old, so I, I, no I don't have any concern. Tim Kalish, how about you? No, his primary value is, is as a power pitcher, not as a hitter, and, and there, that's the real problem. This is a big concern. Uh, among other things, he's a right-handed pitcher with an elbow problem, problem. He bats left-handed. All he has to do is get hit on that elbow, and you don't know what that does uh, to anything. Uh, they already have to consider, are we going to a six-man rotation? To accommodate this guy, which does, you know, they don't really have six quality pitchers. So you're already doing a lot of things to try to work him in. And now you don't know, is he even going to be a, a full-time starter because of this elbow thing? KB, concerned well, you? Yeah, I'll just say this. Steven Strasburg was, I think, 23 years old when he had to get his Tommy John surgery. And you know what? He's been better each and every year since. So if he has to have that kind of surgery now, it's no problem going forward. But like every of the guys just said, you know, this just brings into question how you're going to use him as a baseball player. Everyone's attracted to him as being a six-tool player, right, uh, in the field, with bat, on the mound, doing all these sorts of things. Just get one thing right first. Jack, you know. Yeah, there's a right to have concern, but platelet-rich therapy, plasma therapy, that's becoming almost routine as Tommy John surgery. So things that would make us very concerned in the past now seem to be part of the fabric of baseball. But also, I don't think it's going to cost the Angels a ton of money either way. Either way. So it's worth the risk. It is. Page. Buy or sell. Sixers 118, T-Wolves 112. Great game last night. By or sell that being the best young talent matchup of the month. It went to overtime, and stop me when this sounds familiar. Tom Thibodeau, players minutes, oh, oh, Towns oh. 48, Butler 46. Oh, halt. Um, Only played eight guys all game in the overtime game. Thibodeau has answered the questions about minutes. Quote, we'll see. We're concerned with wins, end quote. Woody, buy or sell that response and concern over minutes at this point with this I'm Thibodeau selling team. it. He has a history of pounding his players into sand, and he's doing it again this year. And look at the fourth quarter. If you considered it overall, 115 points per 100 possessions, that's dead last in the NBA. Why is that happening? Because his players are so tired in the fourth quarter. Add to the rotation. Alex Shaw? I'm going to buy this on a very limited basis, maybe even a lease, because I think over a short period of time he can do this. He can do what he's doing. He can be this is this is becoming a winning team. They need to learn how to do that. Now, at some point, February, March, April, he needs to back off a little bit so they're not dead when they get to the playoffs. Okay, okay, but that deduction you heard was for leasing and buy or sell. It's not lease or hawk. It's buy or sell. Blackstone, how about you? I'm going to sell it. You know, Thibodeau has been criticized not only for running his players into the ground during games with heavy minutes, but also in practices um, as well. And the, the hallmark of winning teams in this league over the last few years, as led by Greg Popovich, has been resting players, picking your spot so that they're fresh in the second half of the grind of the season. Oh. 
Yeah, but Pop has a much, much deeper bench, KG, KB, than, uh, than Thibodeau does. So that, that's not the fairest comparison. I am going to sell this, though, because Tibbs has to know this could be his downfall if he lets it. When your own player, Jimmy Butler, is saying, I got to talk to Tibbs about all those 40-plus minute games, then you need to listen. That's a good point, Jackie. A anything to the point that this is a team and franchise that hasn't won recently, hasn't really met potential right. and expectation I mean, I the last couple of years. Get some wins early, like he said. No, and I understand this game last night. I would have done what he did last night, but the problem is he's doing it more than just this game last night. That's where he has to We'll move on. Buy or sell two, Kareem Skyhook on Roger Goodell. You guys saw this quote yesterday in The Guardian. All signs point to the NBA replacing the NFL as the League of America's future. Tim Callis, show buy or sell that. I just think it's a big overstatement to, to, to all these things about the NFL. The, the NFL has immense problems. They have to figure out what kind of game they can put out there that still has a lot of the uh, physical nature. We all grew up watching and, and remove some of the violence and some of the danger. And that, that's hard to do. But there's no way the NBA or anybody else is overtaking them in the next 10 years. KB? Yeah, that's usually what you say about soccer in this country, right? Look, basketball has its place. It's growing in popularity because of the, the increased stardom uh, of some of the athletes. But NFL is still America's uh, sport, and it's not going anywhere anytime. What's growing for the NBA, besides the length of their season, I think, because we now it's an 11-month year, right? Off-season's a big deal. But the ratings are up 25% on ESPN. and TNT's ratings are up, too. That's not the truth for the NFL, Jackie. So what do you right. buy or sell? So the, rating, the, the ratings are up for the NBA. And also, young people today have a great interest in basketball. All the youth surveys tell you that they favor basketball, boys and girls, over football. But I do agree with Tim. They, the NFL made almost $14 billion last year. The NBA had a great year and made just over, I think, $8 billion. So they're a ways from getting there. It's all about it? money still. Yeah, 50 years ago, people would have said, oh, baseball's always going to be America's game. Guess what? NFL passed it. Give me another 30, 40 years, and I think the NBA, because of its world popularity, and the NFL will never reach that around the world. NBA has a great chance to be the number one sport in the entire world. Brought up the ratings being up 25% uh, for the NBA this year. They were down, whatever it was, 10% for the NFL the last year and a half. Uh, an NFL game still gets about three times the ratings of That's even it. the best uh, NBA game. We'll move on. Buy or sell three, Buster only today. So long, Machado and Donaldson. Where's your mark? With well, the Yanks and Sox stack, least of AL East should sell now. He's talking about all the three other teams in the division. And in the piece, he wondered if the Yankees would be the best destination for Machado or Donaldson. Kevin, only onto something here? Uh, no, I love Olney's work, but he's not on to something here. I mean, why would you just mortgage the rest of your season right now if you're the other teams in AL? Just because Stanton arrived with the Yankees, he's not healthy all the time. Bird's not healthy all the time. They have to get that uh, that rotation together. Aaron Judge not going to have the unbelievable year he had again. I mean, come on, stop, play the game. Yep. Okay, but there, I think there's something to the Machado thing. They probably should have traded Machado last year, Tony, yeah. because he's going to be free agent, and everybody knows he's probably not going to re-sign with the Orioles. They haven't even made a, an, an offer to him. So you got to move on him while you can get something so he doesn't walk on you. I'm looking at the Tampa Bay Rays. I always look at them as a team that's got to sell. Maybe it's time for Evan Longoria to finally get to go play somewhere else, and Chris Archer, too. Woody Page? Yeah, yeah. Jackie, uh, last year, everybody thought the Boston Red Sox were going to win the World Series. Going away. Guess what? They did. So why in the world this year would you sit here and go, if you're in the American League East, you go, oh, they got it wrapped up. We can't. Time. Oh, I got to be leading this. This ball trade, Marlins sell-off continues. Marcelo Zuna to the Cardinals. Here's Scott Boris. Quote, we are seeing one of the major leagues jewelry store become a pawn shop. Good analogy, Woody? No, not at all. I mean, it's been, what, 20 years since they won a World Series? They've been basically a back alley pawn shop for, for years and years and years, occasionally getting a player. I would say it's more like a Trump company. Get bankrupt, come back, declare bankruptcy again. But this Azuna's trade makes no sense to me. The guy got a gold glove, he's a great hitter, and he's eligible for arbitration. It's not like he's even a free agent. Why do it? Here's my thinking, though. Would you rather be maybe a Marlins fan than a Rockies fan, at least have those two championships in the last 25 years? What do you I what? Don't put that on me. I, I put it on I'm you. We'll move on. Show that to more impressed with the Kings gymnastic towel guy or the unflinching security guy behind him, Jackie. Love the unflinching guy, but you know what? I can't do that backflip. Bet the security guard can either. Let's promote that.
Uh, oh, I, I like the guy that comes out and cleans the floor because can you imagine him working in a Walmart? I mean, that would just draw crowds all the time. Clean up on aisle five. He's right there. Uh, yeah. Jackie McMullen, 30 seconds of FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new favorite NBA promotion. It was with the Sacramento Kings. They blindfolded a brother and sister and sent them out to center court to find the prize. They're feeling around at center court.